Hello and welcome back to part 3 of the video about Sony's DWR SO3D receiver. Finally, in video number 3, we will connect transmitters to the SO3D. We have set up the receiver into the main frequency block 3038. Then we have chosen a sub block, which was channel 30, 31, 32. And then we have select group D11, frequency 1 to channel 1 and frequency 2 to channel 2. Now it's time to connect a transmitter. But before we do this, we have to take care that the transmitter is in the right main frequency block and in the right sub frequency block. Okay, the transmitter I use here is a DVT-B30, link to this product in the description. And if you switch it on, you see an antenna symbol on the upper left corner, which shows you that the transmitter is transmitting something. If you want to change the frequency or the output power, you have to switch the transmitter in a special mode. To do this, you switch it off, press the set button and switch it on again. And now you see the antenna symbol here is gone, which means the transmitter is not transmitting any RF signal. Press the minus button to the first point of the menu and you see the band you can use. We need 30 to 32, so press the set button for a second until it blinks and then you can go to 32. Press the set button again, it is stored. Switch the transmitter off and on again and the transmitter is working in the chosen frequency range. Now you have two possibilities to set up the frequency in the transmitter. First you go the same way as we have done before where we change the band and you go to frequency, change to the group D11 we have chosen on the receiver and then the frequency 1 or 2 to connect the transmitter to channel 1 or channel 2 on the receiver. That's the standard way, nice to use. Second way is to use the cross remote. The cross remote is an RF remote which establish a connection between the receiver and the transmitter to change settings from the receiver side in the transmitter over air. How cross remote works? This is part of another video which I link to you in the description if I have done it. The benefit of the cross remote is that receiver and transmitters sharing data and in the first pairing process the receiver is the master and pushing the transmission frequency and the codec to the body pack, you get a second later a full working system. Let's do it. To use cross remote, you have to pair the transmitter and the receiver one time. After this point, you can always change data on the receiver and it will be synced to the transmitter as long as it is in range. It's a little bit like pairing a Bluetooth device to your mobile phone. Here we have the two devices. And to start the pairing process is very simple. You choose the channel you like to use. In our case, channel 1. Switch the receiver off. Press the minus button and switch the receiver on. And it starts scanning. And you do the same thing on the body pack. Switch it off. Press the minus button and switch it on. It says scanning. And a second later, it shows you the name of the transmitter the receiver has found. In our case, the body pack you press. Set and it says get information and a second later pairing done. And now you see here your RF level, your cross remote level, your battery level and if you have audio you see also here your audio level. And now you have it. Your system is ready to go. You can do the pairing process again with, this, with the second channel and a second transmitter and then your system is set up complete. What else cross remote can do for you we will see in the next video. If you have any idea what I can do better, if you have any idea what you'd like to see in another video, write in the comment fields. Sum up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't like the video. Subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.